there's the frump frump snow. Everybody knows the frump frump snow. That's that nice fresh stuff. Then you get the crunch crunch snow. That's where you got that melted layer on top or you know a little sprinkle of the wet stuff on top of the snow and it freezes gets that crust that's the crunch crunch snow then there's the squeak which comes in the super super cold places you know siberia antarctica manitoba and saskatchewan and in alberta they know the sound Welcome to Snowology. And welcome back to another episode. Thank you for clicking on the video. You shouldn't come to regret it, I hope. And you'll stick around. Let's get on with the show. So, uh, hey. Like I said in the previous clip, thank you for clicking on the video. Um, so yeah, I'm as far as we know, uh, because the wind is supposed to stop by supper time tonight, it is just after lunchtime. Uh, so I think last night, which was one of the last clips you saw in the last video, where it was absolutely howling a gale, that must have been the whip we call at the tail of the uh, storm, where it gets worse, and then it starts getting better. So, so this, Actually, the first time I've been able to go out to the other bale yard and pick up the uh, lower quality hay that we normally use right now leading up to calving season. Uh, reason being is a few days ago I went out there and grabbed a few bales and I got to about here and this tractor started dying. Uh, so I was basically feathering it trying to get it to turn south because the wind was banging straight into fuel filters right here so I immediately knew it was fuel gelling because it was minus 40 something so that's why I have these panels makeshift on there right now and as you can see the temperature gauge is far more healthy today so yeah I barely made it home that day uh, so I figured that way, not chancing it. Don't want to be a machine down and have it dead out here in the wide open where there's no chance of starting it. We just use the bales from down in the bale yard, which it's not a big deal. They take from Peter to pay Paul, is that what the saying is? No. Starting to see people out moving around now. Uh, the plows, snow plows haven't been back this way. They were out here a couple of days ago, but uh, they need to get back out. Because as you can tell, the roads are clear. Um, for the most part, I think we'll probably have to put a, an alert into the, uh, the uh, municipal call center. Because as you can see, the roads are clear. But wherever there is shelter, like by the yard, the snow is over a foot deep and it is like concrete. So, hopefully they'll be out soon to fix that. So, let's get to feeding and let's get about our week. Yeah, we're gonna be a while cleaning up out of this. That's about eight feet tall. And it goes on and on and on and on. Looking up, I don't have to move that. I can probably pull these bales out sideways. But you know what makes this worse? If you'll notice there's a bit of a black tinge on top of it, that's because the quarter section straight that way was summer tilled in the fall. So yeah, bare as a baby's bum. And the dirt is blowing too. That's fun. I have equipment sitting in there. Somewhere. I see the hoses. It's in there somewhere. Oh man. Hey Allie. I tell you, you can all... Here's her mum right there. How's a girl? Um, 
you can almost see the breath of relief on them. Yeah, I blew out two bales out here right now. I figured the sooner they start getting their cores back up, warming up. Here's, you can always tell Suki. Hey, Suki! Got the dots. Hey, sweetie. Hey, my girl. He's a darling. Yeah. So, yeah, like I said, my plan is to uh, get out with a skid steer and start plowing out all the driveways, uh, get the silage pit area cleaned up. The big stuff I'm not going to worry about right away, but uh, at least get to where I can get the silage, just checking everybody over. Just make sure everybody's come through this okay. I did notice uh, there was a few that got. Uh, I call it clubfoot. I know it's, that's a plant term for like canola. Hey, Sally Bellies. He's a girl. Um, sorry, uh, squirrel. Clubfoot, yeah. I call it clubfoot, and it's when a uh, cow. There's hikers. Uh, I know a squirrel. I call it cl clubfoot when they're in the pen and either standing still for a very long period of time or they're laying down and someone poops on their foot. So then they get a big frozen nugget attached to their foot. Hey, Zikers. Hey, girl. Um, so yeah, I noticed there was a couple of them. I'm trying to see if I can find them. Uh, da, 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 da. It might, they might have fallen off now because it is a lot milder. Here is, here's the big guy. See what I mean? end of his tail is gone at least it's it's sealed up that's probably the one good thing about the frost how you doing big guy you okay there oh yeah me doesn't like being touched hey pugsley uh, i don't see them maybe it did fall off already there's lamar he's doing quite well yeah i think we're good there was two of them i saw and it literally looked like they were lugging around. Just a big block of poop stuck to the, and it was, both of them was back feet. Anyway, I think we're good. Uh, it normally, it does happen. And that's the thing is everybody, everybody knows that they'll get, they'll get in rough shape during the uh, cold. Uh, see, this is one of the cows that she's actually going to see. She's actually flat footed in the back, but she's one of the older cows. She goes to the uh, retirement pen. So, and so does Marky. She goes to the retirement pen and so does this one. I think that's 131. Oh no, that's 33. Huh. Anyway, so yeah, I'm gonna go get plowing. Everybody seems good. <laughs> ah, this is too funny. The vent down there, I've got it blowing into the tarp. It's actually quite nice down there. Sucks up here. Close that vent off with just this hose. So yeah, once we get this door closed, it's gonna be lovely in here. Yeah. I'll just stay down here for a bit, warm my face up. Woo! Oh, too funny. That is not one of the dumber things that I've ever done. Now, as you can see, oh, that fell off. Must have done that right when I stopped there. Uh, yeah, I had that hose blowing inside the tarp, as you saw. So every so often I'll just stop and put my head down inside the tarp and thaw my nose out. But for the most part, I was out there for an hour plowing snow. Now the only problem was every time I turned into the wind, the wind would like literally, stop this in case you fall. The wind would literally suck the tarp right out the front door. Um, so maybe if there was a way to like strap it back, but you know where I got this idea from? Um, the old timers, the old tractors, they used to have the uh, tarp around the hood up to the driver. 
So yeah, I'd seen those on uh, in pictures and on YouTube, the old tractors with the uh, the wrap around, whether it was to the cab or just to the driver, because some of them were not enclosed. <laughs> Typo, tough old critters. So yeah, I just figured till I get this door done, I needed to get this snow clear because I need to get back to the silage pit. So, and the good thing was the uh, greater driver was out today, so. He's plowed the big drifts from the main road, so that's good. So yeah. Oh, I can't wait till that door's on, cause man, that little heater, it cranks out. I'm pleasantly surprised. Well, she was minus 30 through the night. So, you know, wind wasn't too much. It was minus 20. Hey, Scully. Um, minus 22, I think it was last night. So, really warmed up. <laughs> I know other people going, see what? So yeah, minus 30, I think minus 31 was the coldest it got to. So the little snorkel thing seems to be doing a great job. And yes, the obvious is, this box is chooched. It's been beat up so much. Now, I know a really great idea, uh, BCP Trucking, Brandon and Kathy over there. Um, they have really good luck with uh, shutting down their tr waters at night. Um, just making sure there's no strange tracks. I've seen a lot of, uh, not uh, foxy, but uh, coyote tracks. Um, he scully. He's cute. Cute bugger. Um, so yeah, when it gets cold through the night during storms, they just shut their troughs down to save them. It's far better to have a running trough through the day and not run it at night than to have a trough kaputskied. Um, <clears throat> what they do, uh, especially out in the pasture with the cows at the big herd and in their, uh, their corral setup, as they can wrap the box in one side to protect the one side. We can't do that because we're feeding off of both sides. So we can't technically do that. But this tank top is screwed. Um, as you can see, the actual joins are all messed up. And the, uh, the reason why it's loose is one screw on this side and one screw in that side, which is the uh, the screw that stays there because there's a sliding uh, hole on it. Anyway, they've sheared off trying to get these off. So that's why it's kind of set up like this because it's been beat. And it is, uh, what is this one now? 15 years old, I think it is. Yeah, yeah, because we had this trough set up it used to be set up but we actually moved it when we built these corrals because there was just a, a big pen that was set up over here with uh, bales we, we used to use big square flax bales as our walls um, until we got the yard started to get built because there was nothing in this yard when we got this place this is all us this is not last generation this is not a multi-generation this is us there was nothing here when we started this yard 20 20 well 24 years ago now so yeah it's a work in progress so anyway nice to see <clears throat> as far as i know all the water troughs are accounted for munchkins so yeah it's bail day today and at some point this week the buyer is supposed to be coming down put my glove back on my hands going numb because yes it's still cold the buyer is supposed to be coming down to look at them. Um, but the big thing is to move this lot. Um, the sooner we can get these boys out of here, the better. Just checking, just watched BCP's video uh, where they just had to dose their, their uh, holdback heifers to uh, deal with uh, pneumonia. And for the most part, everyone seems good. I don't see anybody droopy. Everyone's just sort of taking in the sun because it's the first time they've seen it in a week, over a week now. Eight days since we saw the sun last. 
Hey, Yeti's brother. That's the one that likes to climb in the bell ring. Enemy. So yeah, hopefully we can get these. We normally move these steers off the end of January, first week of February. Typically is when we do it. Uh, just business-wise, it's a good move for us. There's no point in us keeping them till the end of winter. We have done it. There really is no point for what we put on them as a grass-fed outfit. We find it better just to move them off. And plus, like I said, for business-wise, it, it fits for the way that we're doing stuff. Little Nelly, one of our keeping heifers. So yeah, they will, the boys will leave and then uh, we'll start being the boss lady and then every so often Christina will come out too. Hey Candy. Um, spending time with the heifers to know which ones are sticking around. Rue is sticking around. Candy is sticking around. Nelly is sticking around. Quite often these decisions are made due to uh, who their mums are as much as what they look like. She's smaller, but she is a later cow, but she's definitely got a good good size to her, good frame. Don't yeah, you little munchkin. Being ignorant right now, she won't stand still. Anyway, I'll wrap it down too long. Gotta get going. Gotta get going. So yeah, <laughs> I don't know if I'd shown that. The old winter front. Piece of puck board. Good to go. Anyway, so we're at the next stage of the door. So I have cut and flanged all the angle iron. So it's tacked in. So decent little gaps. Uh, so yeah, I don't really want to go and put any welds, too much welding in here, because I have no way to get it out of there. I've got some small die grinders, but within reason. I'll probably weld the backside and that'll probably be good for that. So yeah, I don't need to do a whole lot of welding, just I'll probably just put a few beads and then I'll caulk the rest of it because there's just the tiniest of, uh, like I don't even know if you could fit a playing card or a piece of paper through the gap there, but just to seal it up, I'll seal it up before I paint it. So yeah, from what I'm planning right now with that skinny stuff, I've got some of that double-sided sticky uh, draft tape. So I'm gonna put it around there and then stick this stuff down on that. So we'll see how that goes. If it's not working so good, uh, we'll just drill through it and then I'll get some uh, three quarter inch, one eighth uh, flat bar uh, and just make a flange to go on top of it and then if we ever want to move up to the bigger thicker stuff we'll just use the same flange and all the hole spacing so but yeah starting to look like somebody might know what they're doing not me but so yeah because uh, what we'll end up doing is get this all welded up get it all good then we'll probably uh figure out how to center it in the door. I had a very good recommendation by one of you fine subscribers when I am centering it in the door. I'll try not to fall on my butt here. Uh, is to make sure that it's got lots of room for the hinge to work, but also lots of room so I don't pinch my fingers on the handle. Very good thinking. I think that's talking from experience. So yeah. Yeah, there's my winter front right now. <laughs> anyway, it's the end of another night. Welcome back to another day at the Shire. It is Saturday. And yes, uh, the bulk of the storm has passed and it is better. But the wind is blowing straight out of the south, right into the yard. It's a wind chill of minus 25. Yes, it's only minus 14 or 15 right now. So a lot warmer than it has been, but Holy moly, does it feel chilly. Uh, yeah, I didn't do a whole lot. Didn't get anything done in the workshop last night. My production's been a little bit under the weather. Just another little uh, meh going through the system. So uh, took some downtime, trying to feel better. A lot of stuff going on right now. Um, but 
hopefully this coming week we're going to be moving the steers uh, out and get a game plan for the heifers that we're not keeping. They will hopefully be shipping out ASAP also. So that's kind of cool. Because once you get those calves gone, it'll free up some time so I can get on with some of these projects. So, going to get the big crew fed, give them their uh, eating straw, and then give them their bedding straw, and get about our day. Someday we'll see the sun too. It'd be great. Nature, please, maybe, I don't know. Well, I'll tell you one thing. Probably best not to do intricate uh, building work when you're uh, run down, because everything is just twice as hard. Literally twice as hard. Anyway, that's the door frame in. So, as you'll notice, the brass washers are not in the hinges. Uh, they're in there somewhere. Because this thing has fallen off of here so many times, I tacked it in and uh, I took the clamps off and uh, all the little tacks broke. So apparently this stuff, unless you put a real bunch of heat to it, it won't take. Now granted, this is quite a heavy door. So yeah, it's actually quite big when you get down to it. So, uh, as expected, because uh, I did it as close as I could, um, the door through the welding has tweaked. As you can see, I left, I left a space uh, for a gasket. I was using uh, big thick washers. So, once it's closed where the gap is, this gap down here is, instead of an eighth, it's a quarter inch. All the rest are eighths. Uh, you can really see that there. So, yeah, I'm gonna take it off. I'll give it a tweak, trying to get it back to the fine testing. Because as far as I know, that's all the welding that's gonna happen on the door. I'm gonna go back over, because I had to put these three quarter inch uh, spacer blocks on here to get the bullet hinges up, up to the front. So the reason I put the hinges at the front of the door is so when you turn it out, it doesn't get any closer to this handle. So that way I've got lots of room, but it never gets all that much closer. Other reason is I need to have the center of this tube so I can drill a hole through it to put my latch on it. So I'll have, uh, I'll have like a, an L, uh, a flat plate latch that'll come down somewhere in this area somewhere as close to the middle as possible. Um, so yeah, it'll just be like a, well, you'll see it when I make it. So, oh, that fought me every step of the way. I've got the, these lights bent up so they don't catch the door anymore. I just, I just pushed these brackets up out of the way. So the lights are still functioning, but they're far enough out of the way. And yes, I do have enough space currently to push the door up and it'll fall out. So that's good. So yeah, so I'll make a handle for it. And then the other thing will be to make a limiter for it. Because one of you fine folks suggested that, something to stop it from going winging out. So yeah, if I could figure a place to put a gas ram on it, it'd be great. But probably for now, I'll just put a little bit of chain Something that will mount back here and mount up to here somewhere. Actually, that won't work. I'll have to put it on the outside. Yeah. It's going to be difficult, actually. Put it somewhere that it's not going to get caught up on anything. Hmm. Anyway. One step at a time. One step at a time. Okay. Well... I would say this is first draft done. Uh, take it easy on me, folks, because I know there's a lot of professional welders out there. Um, this is my first ever uh, door. 
I don't know why I keep getting my camera all smudged up. Sorry, keep poking you in the eye. Sorry, sorry. It is kind of better. Uh, it's kind of smoky in here anyway. Um, this is the first door I've ever made for a cab. And I know it's a pretty simple one. But anyway, I digress. So, like I said, we've got a simple... Yes, it's a bolt. I haven't done the dressing yet. And I've left the jam nut in there. So that way I can keep adjusting this. But as it goes... So, like I said, there's no limiter on it yet. Uh, and limiter, gas ram, whatever direction we want to go in. That's going to kind of come down to what I can fit. Because if I put a light bar up there, then what I'll do is I'll put, I'll put a gas ram up here out of the way. That way I'm not going to brain myself on it. I know that's technically hard because you have to have one of those to, to bang it. So... This is like the air, so it'd have to be one of those short ones. But even if I put a limiter chain on it right now, like something down here, just to stop it whanging out there and then breaking the hinges off, because with my welds, that's possible. So yeah, it's just got a little stubby. Don't pay attention to that. They're not perfectly in line. I was eyeballing between this and this is a bolt. This is one of these bolts. This is going back to Morris Industries. And I know there's a guy on the old YouTubes here that used to work at Morris Industries. He'll know that. These are the scrapers for the Packers. So yeah, you all know I used the scrapers for making uh, hardened edges for the uh, disc bind turtles. Well, there's the bolt. Made my uh, door handle. That way it brings the door handle out to me in the cab. So, like I said, if I'm not happy with how it's going, I'm going to uh, Dremel a notch for that part to ride in. That way it'll sit in it. But right now, it's good. It's fairly sturdy. Um, so yeah, like I said, maybe by the uh, end of this video, you'll be able to see the window installed. So. I'll bring you back. I forget to that. You. There's the long train. So today, uh, so yeah, they get their hay bale, and then every two days they get their three-year-old oat straw, which they just love. So that's definitely going to be a keeper for going forward. I'll probably say that before. Anyway, so with silage today. Uh, because I cut the silage two-thirds to a third of the two-year-old wheat straw. I might switch that to oat straw and see how they like that. Um, even though there's a lot of nitrates in the wheat straw. So, and they're getting oat straw. Anyway, big difference now is uh, because we are one month out from calving. Um, I've started adding, adding the Romanson feedlot mineral. Uh, which comes in like a feed nut So I started adding uh, that to the ration. So I'm interested to see what they think Because um, they're actually not cleaning up the silage right now. I Know as they get closer to the end they can't eat a lot because they're stuffed um, But yeah, I'm interested to see how this goes I uh, met with uh, our buyer today Andy uh, he's, he really likes how the calves look, so he's going to talk to me again tomorrow after he takes the pictures to uh, the rest of the people, his connections. Uh, and we're, uh, me and the boss lady are supposed to start hauling on Wednesday. So next video you'll get to see that. So as far as he said, he wants the, all the steers and he wants the heifers that are going as well as soon as possible. So that's going to be nice to get these guys moved off because... One last thing I have to do. Yeah. But yeah, see there's still a couple in here bowing down on these oat straw bales. That's that evil one. That's 66. She's got that she's got a chip bone in her leg. And I tried to catch her and she tried to run me down. Arsehole. So yeah, these guys will be out. Out in the way. Uh, 12 pampers staying back.
that's gonna be our number going forward 12 12 replacements and 10 going uh, 10 to 12 going out that number will play around so anyway summer time so masking tape uh, I've learned because I know I did do I cut perspex for something else a while ago uh, and I know using a saw is a big no-no especially acrylic it shatters it chips it chips really bad so a very very skinny grinder blade it cuts and kind of melts its way through so drum roll please The door is in. Um, so, right now it is. I thought about yeah, thought about gluing it because uh, I have some of that liquid hammer. Um, but I didn't quite trust it. So I worked with this stuff before. Carpet tape, double-sided, double-sticky, and it's also fibrous, so it's quite strong. So, as you can see, I sliced it, and then you can just rip it, and it's kind of like duct tape. It just keeps tearing along that same uh, piece. Uh, the reason I did that was I did two layers. I did two layers of tape all the way around it. So what I'll do now is I will go along and just bed it in and then what I might do uh, afterwards is get some washers some kind uh, drill some holes uh, and I have a whole bunch of uh, self tapping uh, tin screws like short tin screws and just put a bunch of washers around it just just to hold it on um, I know from about here up and round, I have space on the flange all the way around to put screws and washers. Down here, um, not so much, but what I'll end up just doing is I'll put the screws in, get all done, and then I'll just cut the back sides of the screws off. Uh, just to be sure. And that thing is, I'm not expecting this glass to be in here forever. Um, this is just basically the first iteration because it's kind of flexible it is like it is firm don't get me wrong like I said it's an eight of an inch thick but like that's a full length piece but but it does have a wiggle and a wobble to it that's why eventually I hope to get a piece of like three eighths that way it's something that the, you know, a stone or a bit of branch or something comes off the bucket, boom. It's not coming through that because that's not stopping much. But this is to stop just the cold wind right now because it won't take much just to peel this back out of here. That's why I didn't want to use glue. So, she's done. Uh, tomorrow we're setting up to haul the calves as I said in the previous clip. So uh, next video, you'll be joining us hauling calves and uh, hopefully Piper Doug's got his better head screwed on by that point. Just, uh, just a word to everybody. Um, January, February is probably the toughest time of the year in ranching especially. And if you're having a hard time, talk to somebody. There's helplines, but talk to your spouse. Talk to your friend. Talk to somebody. Even if it's just a clear your head call it the doldrums for a reason yeah it's always springtime and it's just hey cabbing's in a month and the next thing will be at spring so there you go and you can look forward to haying season job's done see you all in the next video everybody thanks for watching teddy bye